Warning, nickel salts are toxic and irritating. Sulfuric acid fumes are toxic and corrosive. Wear a mask and gloves when handling them. Hi guys, here is MIH. My lab has a decent collection of metal electrodes such as stainless steel, copper, titanium, and lead. However, I missed out one of the most commonly used electrode material, nickel. For an alkaline electrolysis cell, a nickel anode is much more preferred over other anode materials. Fortunately, from the information I've gathered, nickel plating should be rather easy, especially when I just extracted a bunch of nickel sulfate from batteries. To start the plating, I'll make the electrolyte bath first. The recipe of the most commonly used sulfate bath is around 300 grams per liter of nickel sulfate heptahydrate, so I add water to 30 grams of nickel sulfate until the total volume is around 100 mils. Note that in professional baths, there are additives such as boric acid and sulfamic acid that make the coating smoother and stronger, but I want to recycle my nickel sulfate for other projects, so I didn't add the extra chemicals. I also has a beaker of saturated nickel sulfate solution which I crystallized the salt from, and I need to dilute it to the same concentration as the standard solution I've just made. I decided to do it the crude way and place the two solutions side by side. I then gradually added water to the saturated solution and compare the colors until they're about the same shade of green. Now I know this is really inaccurate, but the nickel concentration in the bath doesn't have to be exact. Other variables such as temperature and pH are more crucial in the process. After I felt that the two solutions looked the same, I mixed them up and now I have 250 mils of nickel electroplating bath ready. Of course, it still didn't reach the optimum temperature and pH conditions, but I'll adjust them later. I then prepared the substrate of the electroplating. I heard that nickel adheres to copper better than most other the metals, so despite copper's weak resistance to corrosion, I decided to use it as the substrate. You can see that it is very shiny because I wiped the surface with some hydrochloric acid to remove the surface oxide layer. The copper sheet is positioned in the electroplating cell and hooked to an alligator clip connected to the cathode of the power supply. As for the anode, I didn't use the soluble nickel anodes as the industrial method calls for because I don't have nickel metal available. Instead, I used a strip of lead as an insoluble anode, which will release oxygen instead of dissolving into the solution as it runs. The current was turned on, and you can see large amounts of oxygen bubbles forming on the anode. However, there are also a decent amount of hydrogen forming on the copper, and we don't want it because it disrupts our nickel coating. The usual method of solving this would be lowering the current density, but the current is already lower than a typical value for a nickel electroplating cell, so I decided not to change that. One of the benefits of the current is that it gradually warms up the bath and maintains it at our target temperature, 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. This temperature is rather important to maintain, as higher temperatures would damage the nickel coating, and lower temperatures would slow down the electrochemical reaction. Occasionally, I switch on the hot plate to maintain the solution at the temperature. As the electroplating proceeded, more and more hydrogen bubbles are produced on the copper cathode, and there are no visible nickel depositions. I tried moving the two electrodes closer to each other, but that didn't work. I realized something is definitely wrong by this point, and discovered that the pH of the electrolyte has dropped well below 1. The anodic reaction in the cell releases oxygen, but also sulfuric acid, which stays in the bath and lowers the pH until the reduction of hydronium ions are favored at the cathode over nickel ions, thereby forming hydrogen instead of nickel. I fixed this by dumping a round amount of solid sodium hydroxide and testing the pH, which is around the ideal value of 3. Just a few seconds after, some shiny deposits of nickel began forming on the copper. It was quite thin, but still shows a significant silver-black color. Note that the surface of the copper that didn't face the lead anode is not nickel plated, which means that we need to switch the sides occasionally to ensure even plating. The cell is now running steadily with a current of 1.7 amps. There are slight hydrogen evolution which is not exactly desirable, but the pH is already quite high, so I cannot adjust it more. After 20 minutes, the nickel coating thickened a lot and turned black. There are small particles of nickel sticking on the surface that scatter light and make the coating look dull. 
Ten minutes later, a new type of nickel deposit lighter in color has formed on the surface. I'm not sure if this is a layer of shiny nickel or just some oxide junk, so I decided to leave the plating for some more time. And finally, after 40 minutes of electrical plating, water washings, and drying, this is our nickel plated copper electrode. Its nickel surface is not exactly shiny like the copper parts, but it is already good enough to be used as an electrode. I then decided to plate the rest of the exposed copper surface with nickel as well, just to prevent the copper substrate from oxidizing when it is in harsh corrosive conditions. Because the coating is just for corrosion prevention and not as an electrode material, I speed run the coating in 20 minutes, but I certainly regret this decision as the coating wasn't strong enough and partially flicked off afterwards. Anyways, now I finally got the entire copper sheet plated in nickel. The coating on the lower section was rough compared to the upper section. When the electrode is fully dried, you can see that there is a little section of exposed copper, which of course was really bad. Now for the moment of truth, testing the electrode. I placed our nickel plated copper anode and a stainless steel cathode side by side in a sodium zincate cell and turned on the power. Immediately, a lot of gases are released on both of the electrodes. The current is around 2 amps, which isn't a lot, so after 20 minutes of testing, I turned up the current to 4.6 amps, and the electrode was still holding surprisingly well. As you can see, there are no apparent surface deformations or cracks. I just decided to really test the electrode's limits and crank the current to 6 amps, which is the maximum for my power supply. Now, the upper part of the coating started to flake off a little, but the lower part is still fine. Its surface area in the test was around 80 square centimeters, which gives a current density of 75 milliamps per square centimeter. This is not a bad number, and is perfectly fine for normal electrolysis experiments. Upon inspecting the electrode, we can see that the upper section was flaking off quite badly, but the lower part remains intact, which again emphasizes the necessity of long plating time. I'll probably try to plate the upper parts again for extra protection. See you soon!